Yeah, boy! What's going on, guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Lab. Today, we're going to look at a Macintosh car audio amplifier. That's right. The high-end home audio Macintosh company, Macintosh Laboratory Incorporated, made car audio amplifiers from the mid-90s until right around the mid-2000s. We have the MC443 here. We're going to show you a little bit closer, do some amp dyno tests and all that fun stuff. Now, I will tell you in advance, this is not going to be a detailed video. Right, we're just going to show the amp dyno test mainly. So I posted this question to the YouTube crowd and said, look, you guys want to see a full video or do you want to have it in two different parts? Got a lot of different feedback and they're like, oh, full video, are you crazy? Two parts, full video, two parts. So I decided to go ahead and do the dyno video first because some people don't really care about all the fluff. They just want to see the numbers. So that's what I decided to do here first and then later we're going to do a fully detailed video. Now, we have three types of viewers that I can anticipate. One is going to be, why is this amp so expensive and so little power? That would be the base heads. Two are going to be, why not test more parameters? Why aren't you testing signal to noise ratio, damping factor, frequency response, all that good stuff. And the third group is going to just say, thanks for the video. We appreciate the info. So which one of these are you going to be? The MC443 came in two different flavors. One had the VU meters and one like the one I have did not. This amp is rated 300 watts at 4 ohms, 500 watts at 2 ohms, and back in the day retailed for around $800. I'm told that this version without the meters is actually pretty rare. So you can notice one interesting thing is that the ratings are done with 0.005% THD. So extremely low distortion is where they get these ratings. So it will be interesting to see what they do up to 1% THD. Now, back in 1998, Car Audio and Electronics tested the MC443 and also a couple other amps, and they tested at 12.5 volts. They got 353 watts at 4 ohms, 535 at 2 ohms, and 560 at 1 ohm. They got very low efficiency, and that's expected. This is a Class AB monoblock, but it was the cleanest amp in the crowd. Now, check the video description below. I have a couple of links to some Macintosh videos where they show how amplifiers are made at Macintosh and also some behind the scenes is just really cool. So make sure you check that out. So enjoy one of life's finer pleasures. Pardon me, would you have any gray poupon? But of course. Apologies in advance. No frequency response, damping factor, or enhanced test to that nature. All we're going to show is the power output here. So get ready. First off, let's try 8 ohms. SQ sub duty? I don't know. It doesn't even show an 8 ohm rating. We decided we'd go ahead and test it at 8 ohms, right around 14 and a half volts. See what we get. 278 watts certified at 14.34. It's very nice. It's actually very close to the 4 ohm rating. Now let's try uncertified. This takes us up to the clipping point. Now remember the power guard is enabled on the amplifier so it will not allow it to go into hard clipping. 282 watts at 14.34. Now let's try the dynamic run. Again, all these tests are run at 40 hertz. And there we see 284, 285, 286, and 14.38 volts. Now the calculated efficiency, 64.2% which is about what's expected for a class AB amplifier. Next up, let's try four ohms rated 300 watts at 0.005% THD at 14.4 volts. Let's see what we get up to 1% THD. And look at this, wow, 476 at 14.28. That's what I'm talking about. So the numbers at 0.005% obviously are going to be lower than 1% THD, but it is interesting to see the difference here we're getting. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point, and look at this, 486, almost got 500 watts at 14.22 volts, and it's rated 500 watts at 2 ohms, and we're still at 4 ohms. 
dynamic test sends a dynamic pulse, 40 hertz pulse into the amp. And we do get over that 500 watt rating. Look at this, 503 watts at 14.4 volts. Very nice. As far as efficiency goes, 61.8% efficient at 4 ohms. Again, not bad for a Class AB amp. Next up, let's try 2 ohms rated 500 watts. Again, at ultra low THD. First test, going to take us up to 1% THD. And yeah, boy, get ready. 714 watts. That's what Big D is talking about. Yeah, boy! It's always a good feeling to see an amplifier do well compared to its ratings. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point. And again, the power guard is enabled, but we still got 746 watts at 14.54 volts. So very good. Dynamic. Let's check out the dynamic capability at 2 ohms. There you go. 867 watts, 14.28. Nice. Now, as far as efficiency goes, 58% at the 2 ohm measurement, which again, for class AB, it's about expected. Now, next up, we're going to try 1.3 ohms. It's not rated in the manual for this load, but it is rated to handle down to 1 ohm, so we should be okay. Certified test takes us up to 1% total harmonic distortion. And yeah, 826 at 14 volts. Looking good, looking good. Oh yeah, just like body. Looking good, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so uncertified takes us up to the clipping point. 1.33 ohms there we go getting close to 900 watts 879 13.91 volts and next up we will try the dynamic test 1.33 can we bust that 1k Woo! look at this 992 i got a feeling it's got a little bit more juice left yes it does 1038 watts 14.07 volts very impressive from a 300 watt amplifier, wouldn't you say? Now, as far as efficiency goes, right at 50%, 49.4% efficient. Well, there you have it. There's the test, amp dyno test of the Macintosh MC443 non meter version. Pause this if you'd like to see all the results. We just showed you everything that you're seeing on the test sheet, but overall, it did really well. Big D gives it two thumbs up. Now, I talked about it earlier about having two parts. So in the next part, we're going to do a more in-depth review. We'll do a sound demo. We'll talk about what's inside the amp. We'll do some enhanced one-ohm dyno tests and more. But if you stick around to the end of this video, you're going to see some other things too. So make sure you watch past the end of the credits because they always have extra features. So there you have it. The amp dyno test of the Macintosh MC443 sound quality amplifier. Super high end. Can't wait to show you guys more about this amplifier in the future. Thanks as always for watching the video. Appreciate a thumbs up. Patreon.com slash old school stereo to support me. Special thanks to Stuart, Travis, Jesus, Tomcat, and Joe for donating the amp. Thanks a lot. Big D. I'm out of here. All right, so I did some teasers and had some delays this week. Unfortunately, I didn't get this video out soon enough, so I decided I'm going to go ahead and do the one-ohm test and show it to you. Now, it does say in the manual that it remains stable to loads as low as one-ohm, so let's try it. Certified with power guard enabled. There we go, 771 watts at 14.5 volts. So it actually dropped power a little bit versus the 1.3-ohm test that we did. Uncertified up to the clipping point. Let's see what we get there. Well over 800. 852 at 14.36. Now the dynamic run shows the capability of the power supply of this amplifier. Get ready for it. Here we go. 40 hertz test. Bam! Almost 1500 watts. 1448 watts. Very nice. All right, the next set of tests we're gonna run with the power guard disabled, and you do that by grounding the PG terminal on the amplifier. So we're gonna try one ohm, try one ohm uncertified first. See what we get. It's not rated at one ohm loads, but 
says it can handle it. So let's see what we get. Here we go. Disabling power guard for the lose. Yes, we blew it up, my friends. Blew it up. We ran the power guard PG here to ground, as it said, would disable the PG circuit in the amp, and it disabled it okay. It blew the amp up. So big time bummer on that. So now we gotta send the amp off to get fixed before we can finish the second full part. Dang! Sucks.